are the first steps? How have you tried to get into a fashion magazine? I, in the in the acceptance letter that I got from Vogue Business, they were very impressed that I made the video cover letter. Like that was like definitely one of the selling points. Uh, Hello everyone and welcome back to the Glam Observer channel. My name is Jada and I'm the founder and CEO of Glam Observer, the fashion career advice platform. And today we are going to listen to the story of Udita. Udita is one of the students of my online course Break into the Fashion Industry. The course Break into the Fashion Industry is created to help you land your dream job in fashion. So inside the course, you will find everything that you need to land your dream job in fashion. Udita is one of my students. She didn't study fashion. She didn't have any previous work experience in fashion before getting a job at Folk Business, where she's currently working at. So in this video, you're going to listen to, this is actually a recording of one of the Zoom talks that we organize each month for our students. And I wanted to make it very special this time. So together with inviting fashion industry professionals and having a Q&A with me every month, I wanted to give them a bonus. And so inv I invited Udita over to talk about her experience and which strategies of the course she used to land their job at Vogue Business. So if you were on the Zoom talk live, I really hope that you will enjoy this replay. If you are not part of the Break into the Fashion Industry course, I'm sure that this episode will inspire you because Udita shares the strategies that she used to impress the recruiters at Vogue Business. All the strategies, you can find them inside the course Break into the Fashion Industry. And if you're not ready for the course yet, I would like to invite you to a free live webinar that I'm hosting on November the 11th, next Thursday at 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. So in this webinar, I'm going to show you three top secrets to land your dream job in fashion. So I really hope that you will join me in this free live webinar. And now let's get into the story of Edita. You will see that she's so smart. And that when you open your mindset, because we break into the fashion industry, I'm not just teaching you strategies on how to apply for jobs, resume, cover letter, and interview tips, but I also teach you how to think differently in a new mindset that is really make you start thinking differently and having a total different mindset that is going to really unlock you so many doors that you didn't consider so far. So you will listen how Dita is very smart, the strategies that she used. And as I said, if you want to join us and break into the fashion industry or join me in the live webinar that I'm hosting next Thursday, uh, November the 11th. Enjoy it. Hi. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Are you working? Uh, yeah, I had a shift today till, till two. So yeah, I've just been doing uni work after that. It's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it is great to be busy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially like after COVID, I, I was so free last year. So it's like nice to have, to just be busy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hello again, for those of you who were at the Q&A with me like five minutes ago. Thank you for coming also here and for those of you new, hello. Okay, so we're going to start. So meanwhile, if the others are going to join, I'm going to admit them. So everyone, I wanted to introduce you to Udita. She's like you, one of the students of break into the fashion industry. And I wanted to, I wanted you to hear from her today because I believe that her story could be motivation and inspiration for you. She just got an internship at Vogue Business. So yeah, we'll chat a little bit about how she did it and how, so let's start from the beginning, first of all. You're now in London, right? Uh, no, the internship is remote, so I'm in Glasgow, but I'm in the UK. Yeah, and you are born and raised in the UK? No, I, uh, I was born in India and I lived there practically my whole life. And I moved to the UK four years ago for uni. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm 
in my last year of university uh, right now. Yeah. What did you start? What are you studying? So I'm doing joint honors in business and economics. Mm -hmm. And so since you're not studying something related to fashion, I wanted to ask you, when did you got interested in fashion? Yeah, so that's very interesting because I, when I applied for uni, I had no idea that I wanted to work in fashion. And then uh, in 2019, I did an online course with Bukhan University, which was about management and luxury companies. Yeah, and nice. since then, I just got fascinated by learning about the industry. So after that, I did, you know, several online courses about sustainability and business of fashion courses and I think I kind of just wanted to incorporate my degree and also my passion. So since then, I've just been into fashion industry. Yeah. And when you started in getting interested in fashion, so which was your first dream job? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so before I did the Glam Observer course, I had absolutely no idea, to be honest with you, because... The thing is, like, from an outsider perspective, it's so hard to, you know, navigate the industry because there's so many things you could do. So when I did the Glam Observer course and you explained so like the like the the things we could do in the industry, I immediately was like, I want to work in the fashion magazine, um, not from the editorial side, but from the business side of things. So since then, my dream job has to be to work in Condé Nast publication. Um, yeah. So you made it. I did. <laughs> yeah, good for you. So once you realized that you wanted to get into a magazine world, no, mm -hmm. you said that you already took the course break into the fashion industry. So what were the first steps? How have you tried to get into a fashion magazine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like backstory for this is I did the course last year in December, so it was during the winter break. And ever since then, I only applied for two internships and luckily I got both of them. So the one the other one was Mary Claire, uh, which was in partnership with Glam Observer and the other one was Vogue Business. And honestly, what I- well, Two out of two, it is great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, like the, the main strategy I focused on was actually the video cover letter. And I feel like I wanted to discuss that because like in my, in the, in the acceptance letter that I got from Vogue Business, they were very impressed that I made the video cover letter. Like that was like definitely one of the selling points uh, for me. And I did that for both of the internships. Other than that, like other strategies I used was I definitely tailored my CV and my cover letter very like, very like according to the job I was applying for. So Mary Claire was e-commerce and the one that I'm doing with both businesses like data analysis. So for example, what I did was I reread the job application two, three times and I found like keywords from basically what they were looking in and in turn. And I put the keywords under my skills uh, in, my, in my CV. So for Mary Claire, for example, I put that uh, I have extensive knowledge of all the social media platforms, uh, but for Vogue business, I put that I am proficient in Excel and Slack and Microsoft. So I think that definitely kind of made them realize that, you know, I know exactly what they were looking for. Um, and I think that's also a really important strategy to consider. Yeah. Yeah, you're the perfect student to follow step by step. <laughs> what you teach in the course, and she applies that. It's amazing. Yeah, and you know what's really what I really like about what you said is that you apply the strategies because you know people who are maybe you know undecided if taking the course or not. They ask me, but will I really get the the job after the course? And what I say is that I teach you the strategies, but then you have to do the work. You yeah. have to apply the strategies. So as long as you're going to apply the strategies and you put your work, then yes, it could it could work. I mean, yeah. I'm not selling you a job and sending you the course and teaching you the strategies. So like you did, if you apply the strategies and if you put your work, but you have to do the work. You have to find exactly those keywords and put that onto your CV. So yeah it's really up to you to then do the work yeah and I also think uh and specifically for video cover letter I feel like because we are a community and we've done the course so we know about it but it's such a new strategy like even in, in my interview like they discussed it and I have a couple of friends at university who are also interested in the fashion industry and when I tell them that I made like a video cover letter they were just like so shocked because you know they would never think to do that 
Um, so I think that is like a very unique strategy personally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What What is really important in the fashion industry, which is different from applying from any other industry, mainly because it's very, very competitive, mm. more competitive than all the other industry, is trying to stand out. So if you try to do what everyone is doing, it's more difficult to stand out. So that's exactly like you said, the video cover letter, all the strategies focused in the course are more about making you stand out and using things that, you know, are not the traditional application paths. So how long was your video cover letter in the end? Uh, I think I made it for like one and a half minute. It wasn't that long. I basically wanted to make that because I wanted them to have a face to the application and so that they can see me talk and like, because I wanted to, uh, to make my written cover letter very different from my video cover letter because I didn't want to like say the same thing again. Yeah. So in my cover letter, I basically was talking about how I got into fashion industry and from that, how much experience I've gained already and like why I want to apply for the job and I'm what I'm looking for. In my video cover letter, I mentioned, um, I, had, I searched about the recruiter a bit as well. And then I talked about them a bit and like kind of like as if like I was chatting with them online or something and I also talked about why I want to work at Condé Nast why I'm specifically applying for this job and again kind of mentioned my skills um, uh, and I also mentioned like the courses that I've done because I've done 11 courses by far and specifically I only talked about the courses that were relating to the internship yeah yeah that's that's really great and so uh, how many interviews you you did with Vogue Business to get the, the internship? So when I got the interview email, they said there are four people who they want to interview for it and they might have a second round of interviews. So I was actually expecting to get a second one, but actually second interviews never happened. It was just one. Um, and right after that, I got the internship. Yeah, congrats. I guess you, you, you had to be very excited. I remember when you asked me if you had to apply for that book business internship. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Really it's so funny because I was at the airport. I was like flying back to the UK and I was like, if I have to do Mary Claire and Vogue together, that would be a lot of work. But I feel like even you and me were like, it's like a long shot to get that. Like I was also like, I'm not going to get it. I'm just going to apply. But now I'm just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really amazing. Really, really genuinely happy for you. Thank you so much. So here there are, you know, other people following the course. What advice, I mean, what do you believe have been together with, you know, the video cover letter? What has changed for you after the course? I don't know, in terms of maybe reaching out to people or confident, what has changed for you when in the job search process? Yeah, so before the course, I didn't really know how to apply for stuff like I would obviously had a LinkedIn and I would look at jobs and like I would try to apply for them. But one thing I was doing at the time was definitely not tailoring my CV. I was only sending the same thing like I had like a draft already made and I was sending the same thing to so many jobs and I didn't even get any reply from anybody. Also, I don't know if this is like relevant, but it worked for me. But for initially, like before the course, I my I was like basically attaching two documents to my email. So I was attaching my CV and my cover letter, which was like separate documents. And I in my email body, I only put I've applied for this job and that's it. But I think for Mary Claire and Vogue Business, I had my see my cover letter in the email body so like the recruiter could directly read that and my cv was like a one do document separate like s attached to the email so i th i think that that definitely helps because you can basically read the whole thing they don't have to like click and download something else to look at my cv and then my cover letter so i think that was also something that i learned from the course i also because like you talk about like always like selling yourself so I over the summer like created a website and I think when we talk about websites and portfolios people usually think that if you're not working for like a stylist or like you're not working as a designer you can't make a website but I'm not working for either and I made like an online presence of myself so that is literally me talking about all of the experiences I've had you know, I got into graphic designing in the summer. So I put the graphics that I'd made. I like to write sometimes. So I put that. So it's just like all of my creative stuff that I've done in one place. And uh, my recruiter for Vogue Business also 
talked about that, that they were very impressed to see a website already for me, which was not at all related to, you know, styling or designing. It was just like me and my creativity, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I really love that you mentioned that because mm -hmm. that's true. Many people believe that a fashion portfolio is only for, you know, the more crafty jobs. But mm -hmm. nowadays you can create a website for yeah. anything. Like if you would like to work in social media, you might want to put some social media graphic or send to brand like an example of what you would post on Instagram if you were the social media manager for that brand. So there are very different kind of portfolios that you can build. So I think that's great that you also build the website. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. So what do you do today at Book Business? So today, so we're basically like, I'm assisting them to create the next winter report. So we are analyzing data for like 60 luxury brands. And we are kind of coming up with the new trends, you know, after COVID-19, there have been a lot of uh, digital experiences that brands are undertaking, like gamification is a very big thing right now, especially with luxury brands that like Gucci is creating its own arcade games and stuff. So at Vogue Business, basically, what we're trying to do is like make every every quarter they make a report and I'm basically assisting them with the winter one. So a lot of my work is like Excel and um, uh, I basically collect a lot of data at the moment for, for brands and we're basically like uh, brainstorming ideas uh, for the next issue. That's great. Do you work remotely or do you go into the office? Yeah, so we're, they're based in London and I'm in Glasgow at the moment and the internship is online because offices still at the UK, they're not open yet. So, but they have invited me for a couple of events um, in November. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to go down in November. Um, and also like they, like Condé Nast is amazing with events and like interns and stuff. Like we get access to everything um, inside. It's just because of COVID, the offices are still not allowing people. So I'm working from home. Yeah, yeah. You can share some of the photos from the event on the Facebook group of, with the community. So yeah, you can sure. Take a look at the inside world of book business. So, are there any other words of wisdom or motivational <laughs> tips that you would like to share with the other students, so the, so that they can keep going and like queue in the end, they would get the job. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things for me last year was, as I'm sure for a lot of people was like, and UK had one of the hardest lockdowns last year. I was struggling a lot with finding a job and I basically had zero confidence in myself. You know, like I I, I didn't know if it's going to happen and I was struggling because I was, I was almost graduating uni and I had no idea because obviously like without internships, it's really hard to get a job. And I hadn't interned at all uh, last year last year so I was struggling with that so I feel like always like having confidence and trying to change the way maybe you're like applying for jobs because I feel like I made a lot of mistakes uh, before when I was applying for jobs but I feel like once I decided to you know sit down and kind of analyze what I was doing wrong it really like helped me and pushed me more um, to to get an internship um, which I think is very important. And I, I would also say like, if you have time, try to do as many online courses as well, because one more thing that I mentioned in my Vogue business internship, I solely did a course for this internship. So, if, so I had like a week to apply for Vogue business and I found this Excel course online and I knew the basics of Excel, but I was still, I didn't know anything about functions in Excel. So <laughs> over three days, I completed this course and then after that applied for the internship and I mentioned that in my interview and even in my cover letter and they were also impressed by the fact that I did one course slightly for the internship and that really helped me at the end because the recruiter didn't really need to like explain a lot of excel stuff to me because I already knew that so if you have the time I feel like online courses are such a great way to learn about stuff you know and especially now we have so many different like online uh, portals where you can like access so many amazing courses so yeah. and what I really like about what you said is that yes this course has been very useful for you to show to recruiters that you did this course or you know how to use excel because first of all you need to give proof of each skill actually that you put on your yeah. resume so anyone can write I know how to use Excel, but if you can prove it somehow, like maybe this course was a, you know, a demonstration that you took this course, so you learn Excel, 
And then what I really like is those is also that you said that it was for you important because the recruiter didn't have to, you know, explain yeah. once you got the job how to use Excel. So mm -hmm. what I really uh, what's also something that I wrote in the latest article that I published in Google Observer is that first of all, if you're interested in a topic and you want to improve a skill, yes, it can it can be useful because you're going to show that to other people like recruiters or future boss who can appreciate that. Mm. But, first, for, but first of all, you have to do it for yourself. Yeah. Because you are the number one person you have to make proud and satisfied. So I guess that you were really proud of yourself because mm. you were able to use Excel and, yeah. you know, the recruiter didn't have to explain to you. So I guess that you felt proud in that yeah. moment. Yeah, it was like an easy process for me to na navigate the whole thing, I guess. I, I mean, it got easier. It was definitely like I was still struggling with data, but they yeah. obviously they because they know that I'm an intern, they have to help me. Uh, they still were happy with the fact that I already had the basics done and I knew how to use functions and stuff. Yeah, um, so definitely, definitely. Like when people tell me I want to apply for this job, I don't know how to use it. Photoshop, for example go on YouTube yeah. like in one day before applying and learn Photoshop. I mean, at least the basics, mm -hmm. then the specific functions, maybe you're going to learn them on the job. They wouldn't need it to teach you anyway, even if you were the expert because they use something particular. But if there is something that you would like to do, you can learn basically everything online today, which is Photoshop, Excel, or any other tool that you believe that is going to be useful for you like when they mentioned that for example they use some resource like fashion monitor launch metrics these you know yeah. digital analytical tools you can go on google just google yeah. what it's fashion monitor so you're going to get familiar and mm -hmm. if there is fashion monitor or launch metrics or fashion gps or something you know more specific tools of the fashion industry you know what they are and if you mention that you know you are familiar with these tools, then of course you're a step ahead than yeah. all the other countries like yourself with Excel. Yeah, no, that is a very good advice. And I think it really like works at the end of the day. Like it can be very, uh, like a lot of work that you put into it. Because I remember I, I was just doing this course for three days and I had no time to apply, but I think it was just worth it at the end because I strong like I was confidently talking about um, the fact that I do know Excel and I wasn't just saying it for the sake of it. Yeah. And for example, in your case, you wanted to wait, but for example, you can even start the course today and you yeah. apply the same day, but mm -hmm. make sure that, of course, you hand it as yeah. fast as you can. So if you're going to get the job interview like in two days, you know how to answer because you already finished this course. So yeah. you waited, but you can also apply today and start the course today and study in the night to finish that and at least have, you know, something, the base, the foundation that you need to, to you know, have a job interview. Yeah. Yeah. Before getting mm -hmm. internships at Marie Claire and Vogue Business, did you have any other experience on your resume? Yeah, so at uni, I'm involved with um, my university magazine. So I'm the online editor for that. And then I'm also part of the fashion society that we have here at uni. And both of the things were, um, again, uh, something that I wanted to put in my resume for sure, because as the online editor for my magazine, I basically am in charge of, you know, editing so many articles and like looking over columnists and um, uploading uh, articles on the website. I also overlook all of the social media accounts. And for the Fashion Society, I'm basically in charge of, so the, it's a charity fashion show. So we basically raise money for charities. And in the past, we've raised 43,000 pounds, which, uh, which was again, very impressive for the recruiter because, uh, and that's just like students doing that. So every, every person who is involved with the society, we have like an individual fundraiser of 150 pounds that we do. On top of that, we have a show in February and we also do five photo shoots. So my, my job is to find designers who are like students basically like either graduated or like still students and asking them if they want to collaborate with us and we have like a creative team and a creative director who has a vision and we basically like get designers for that and then we have the show which is our biggest charity uh fundraising thing so i think those were my two one main ones um and i've also done an internship back in india 
a, a marketing one, but I didn't really use that one for Marie Claire or Vogue business. I mainly focused on the magazine and the fashion show, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so an example that you can get a job by using uh, just your university experiences on, mm -hmm. in your case, maybe if someone like you, maybe they don't have anything similar in the university because the university doesn't have the magazine or doesn't yeah. have a fashion society, you can even start your own fashion blog exactly. and put that on your resume. So you got the job without a fashion degree, without any previous yeah. real work fashion experience yeah. so is absolutely possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and especially with like these university societies, uh, they are already a business in itself you know like they're just students running a business basically and I feel like you definitely learn a lot of skills that you wouldn't have learned otherwise um so I'm very grateful for that for sure yeah great job really thank Good. you so much <laughs> all right Anita thank you so so much for sharing your experience and I wish you all the best with Vogue business keep me updated I want to know how it goes uh, thank you so much thank you so much for your time and I of wish course. you all the best thank you so much have a nice evening thank you bye bye, bye guys <laughs>